Brooke, thanks very much. Happening now, all U.S. options are on the table when it comes to Iran's nuclear program, including the use of military force. We're going to get the latest on the negotiations and what Washington, the Obama administration, is prepared to do in my exclusive interview with the Defense Secretary Leon Panetta and the Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. That interview coming up. Also, the new strategy Mitt Romney is using against President Obama out there on the campaign trail. Plus, gripping video of a horrific crash. A car plowing into a crowded supermarket. Lots of in injuries, but amazingly, no one killed. I'm Wolf Blitzer. You're in the Situation Room. This is CNN Breaking News. But let's begin with breaking news just coming into the Situation Room right now. Out of Afghanistan, word of a military crash. Let's go straight to our Pentagon correspondent, Barbara Starr. Uh, Barbara, I know there are casualties. What are you hearing? Wolf, a U.S. official tells us a U.S. Army Black Hawk helicopter has crashed in southern Afghanistan. At this point, they believe it crashed during bad weather, but the official tells us they cannot yet rule out enemy action in this incident. Sadly, they do believe all four crew members on board perished in this helicopter crash. There were a number of soldiers on the ground at a combat outpost waiting to be picked up by the helicopter, transported to another area, and they report seeing the helicopter go down. So it could have been significantly worse, but the most terrible news possibly now for four American military families. Again, they believe this Black Hawk went down in bad weather, but they cannot yet rule out enemy action. And if the past is any uh, example, you should expect to see some sort of claims from the Taliban. So the Army, the U.S. military will want to get specific word out as soon as they have all the facts. Wolf. Four more American families are about to be notified of a loss of loved ones. A sad story continuing in Afghanistan right now. We'll get more information, Barbara, as it comes in. I spoke about this war in Afghanistan at NATO headquarters outside Brussels, Belgium, yesterday. I spoke with the Defense Secretary Leon Panetta and the Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. They sat down together with me for an exclusive interview uh, in Brussels. Listen. Madam Secretary, Mr. Secretary, thanks very much for joining us. We're glad to be here with you. Let's talk about Afghanistan mm -hmm. briefly. Uh, $2 billion a week in U.S. taxpayer dollars being spent to maintain that troop level, the assistance to the Afghan people. Uh, is this money well spent right now? $100 billion a year for another two and a half years? Well, first of all, well, we are in a transition. And as we transition, the Afghan security forces are stepping up to protect their own people. And as we saw over the weekend with those deplorable attacks, luckily they were not successful. And that was because the Afghan security forces, which our uh, soldiers and others of the NATO ISAF uh, alliance have been training and mentoring. Uh, so I think that if you look, as we do, at the progress that has been made on the security side, but also in other indicators, health and education and the economy, there is definite progress. That doesn't mean it's going to be easy, but we are on the way to fulfilling uh, the commitment that President Obama made about uh, moving toward uh, the 2014 uh, deadline for the end of combat operations. So this is money well spent, hundreds of billions of additional dollars. Is that what you're saying? I think you can uh, certainly find fault with uh, any kind of war. And this has been a war. Uh, you can go back and look at any of the wars that the United States has fought. But if you consider why, the, why we're there and the fact that, thank goodness, we've not been attacked again uh, since 9-11 and we have dismantled al-Qaeda thanks to a lot of great work uh, when uh, Leon was at the CIA before going to the Defense Department, uh, I think there's no doubt that America is more secure, uh, Afghanistan is more secure. But we, we're not resting on our laurels. We're looking forward to what kind of relationship we all will have, NATO and the United States, after 2014 to help Afghanistan continue uh, on this path. You trust Afghan President, Mr. Secretary Hamid Karzai? He, he is the leader of Afghanistan. You trust him? I mean, I, I've sat down with him. I talk with him. We talk pretty frankly with each other. Uh, and, uh, you know, he is, the, he is the leader and he's the person we have to deal with. Does that mean you trust them, though? Well, I mean, you, certainly, you know, you, you trust the leaders that you, you have to deal with, uh, but you always 
kind of watch your back at the same time. That doesn't time. sound like a ringing endorsement of the leader of Afghanistan. Well, you know, it's, it's true for any leader we deal with. Uh, you know, but he, you, this one has said awful things about the United States. No, I understand. And uh, obviously, uh, that's, been, that's been a concern. But at the same time, uh, we have had the ability to uh, directly relate to him when it comes to some of the major issues that we've had to confront. When you served in Congress, you were on the Budget Committee, as I well remember. Hundred billion dollars. You know what that kind of money could spend yeah. in the United States during these tough economic times. And the American public is increasingly frustrated when they see this money is being spent in Afghanistan rather than in the United States. I, I understand what you're saying, Wolf. Uh, but you know what? The whole purpose of this is to protect the American people. Uh, that's what this war is about. But bin Laden is dead. No, but, but you know, the, the reality is that the attack on the United States on 9-11 was planned from where? It was planned from Afghanistan. And uh, our mission there is to make sure that we have an Afghanistan that can secure and govern itself and it never again can become a safe haven for terrorists who would plan attacks on our country. That's what this war but is you know all about. the U.S. intelligence officials have told Congress there are more al-Qaeda operatives in Somalia right now than in Afghanistan. The, the danger is this, that if we don't succeed in Afghanistan, then there is the real probability that the Taliban will come back, establish the same kind of safe havens that they have in the past, and who will be the first people to take advantage of it, Al-Qaeda. That's what we have to protect against. Are we asking too much of these American troops who spend three, four, five tours of duty, and now these reports posing once again with dead bodies of fighters urinating on dead bodies, burning Korans, one American soldier starts killing 17 Afghan uh, civilians, including children. Is, is the stress too much to bear right now on these troops? Well, there's, look, there's, there's no question we've been uh, 10 years at war. Uh, and uh, obviously, 10 years of war takes a toll on people and families. But the reality is that the, the vast majority of our men and women in uniform have uh, performed according to the highest standards that we expect of them. Uh, and for every one incident, that uh, we sometimes read about and uh, you know, the kind of atrocious behavior that we all condemn. There are a hundred incidents where our people have helped Afghans, where they have performed uh, courageously in battle. So uh, I, I've been there a number of times, uh, as has the Secretary. I've got to tell you that I am always impressed by the quality of our people that are, that are fighting the battle on behalf of the United States. Let's talk about Iran. Uh, as you know, these talks with the Iranians mm -hmm. are continuing. Another mm -hmm. meeting scheduled for May 23rd. Mm -hmm. The Israeli Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, says, and I'm quoting him now when he heard about that there'll be another round on May 23rd, he said, my initial impression is that Iran has been given a freebie. A freebie. Well, I, I think that uh, is not accurate uh, because what came out of the first meeting uh, was a commitment to a second meeting with a work plan between the two meetings. Uh, we are really getting down to testing whether or not there is a willingness on the part of uh, the Iranians uh, to reach some kind of negotiated uh, resolution. Are you encouraged by the first round? I, I believe that the first round was positive uh, because from our uh, assessment, after having no contact for 15 months, uh, the Iranians came back to the table uh, at a time when sanctions are really uh, continuing to put a lot of pressure on the Iranian government uh, and are willing to talk about their nuclear program, which is an important positive step. Now, we have a long way to go, and this has got to be uh, very clearly laid out as to what the international community expects, what is acceptable, of course, to the United States, since we are at the table with the P5 plus one. Uh, but there is uh, a chance, and I don't want to oversell it, uh, that uh, between now and the second meeting, we will hammer out uh, what uh, the international community, represented by the so-called P5 plus one, uh, requires of Iran and what Iran is willing to do. And if they do take these measures, will you encourage the alliance to to slow down on these economic sanctions? Well, I can't, I can't answer that because it's so hypothetical right now. Uh, I, I believe in, you know, very clear action for action. Uh, we have to see what the Iranians are willing to do. Then we have to make sure they do it. And then we have to reciprocate. That's what a negotiation is all about. And uh, right now we are still uh, in the uh, testing stage. If they 
don't do what you want them to do, the Iranians. Are you, and you're the defense secretary, ready to use military force to destroy their nuclear capabilities? Uh, as the president has pointed out, and as I've pointed out, uh, you know, uh, we, are, we are prepared with all options on the table uh, if we have to respond. Uh, and is there a plan in place? Because I know the Pentagon, I used to cover the Pentagon. There are always contingency plans for everything. Do you have a specific contingency plan to do that? One of the things I found out as Secretary of Defense is we do one hell of a lot of planning on everything. <laughs> so I can assure you that there are plans to deal with And that if situation. you have to do it, would it succeed? Are you convinced it would succeed? I don't think there's any question that if uh, we have to implement that plan, that will be successful. All right, we have a lot more of this exclusive interview coming up here in the Situation Room, including this. Hillary Clinton, the Secretary of State, is it possible she could be Vice President of the United States? What she told me, it certainly has a lot of people buzzing right now. You're going to hear it for yourself. That's coming up in our next hour, much more of the interview as well. Also, sources are revealing some critical new details of that Secret Service prostitution scandal. We're getting new information. That will have, uh, that's coming up after the break. Plus, a car plows into a public supermarket. We have some dramatic surveillance video, uh, but what's, uh, what happened right after the crash is really, really amazing.